President-elect Bola Tinubu has told the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Atikwa Bubakar, and his party that that petition against his victory at the February 25 presidential election constituted a gross abuse of the judicial process. Tinubu, in a preliminary objection filed against Atiku and PDP's petition dated March 21 stated that it was wrong for the petitioner to approach the tribunal with the same issues they had earlier filed at the Supreme Court. Tinubu dismissed Atiku as a serial loser, saying he has been losing presidential polls since 1993. Also within the PDP, the governor, Nyesom Wike of River State, who is the leader of the G5, has said that giving the governorship ticket to the People's Democratic Party, PDP, in uh, uh, Kogi State to Dino Melaye is dead on arrival. As according to him, Mr. Melaye does not have what it takes to be a governor. Mr. Melaye, on the other hand, the spokesperson of People's Democratic Party Presidential Campaign Council, PDP PCC, is aspiring to become the governor of Kogi State in the 11th November election. And speaking in a media chat at Port Harcourt on Tuesday, Mr. Wike said he was aware of the efforts by PDP to manipulate delegates list in Kogi State to favor Mr. Melaye, a former senator from the state. Joining us live to discuss this is Angu Ongu, not Central Zonal Coordinator at Tiku Support Organization and also a member of the PDP. Welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Uh, it's good to have me in your studios again. Mm, it's good to have you. Yeah. yeah, let's begin with um, with the, the statement of the President-elect Bola Tinubu, that uh, the petition before the court by the PDP and its presidential candidate is an abuse of the court processes. What's your response to that? Uh, it's unfortunate that uh, the president that we feel to call his president-elect, not elect now, we make such uh, very frivolous statements. Uh, for real us in the sense that he is speaking as if he owned the courtrooms. Uh, the judiciary is the third arm of government and should be respected. So uh, it's, it's not a personality clash or a personality context for him, Ahmed Bola Tinubu, to go out of his way to be doing name calling. It's, it's unfortunate, but. Uh, we on the side of the PDP are saying that, look, it is uh, a journey man holding on to every straw he can find. Our case before the presidential election petition tribunal is watertight. And Nigerians are looking up to the judiciary, being the last hope of the former man to see that justice is done because uh, there are germane issues raised in that petition. And it's, it's surprising to Nigerians and myself that uh, Mahmoud Yakubu is still at the hands of affairs at uh, the Independent National Electoral Commission. Because what happened on the, the, the 25th of February, it's akin to to, to, to an uh, armed robbery, uh, what they call, you know, haste, is akin to armed robbers attacking a bank. And we want to call it an electoral haste that has taken place uh, in this country. And Mahmoud Yakubu will go ahead and allow an election or a vote that clearly did not follow guidelines. And in your opening, you see Mahmoud saying that a petitioner uh, is wrong by petitioning. That is the petition of the Labour Party uh, that it lacks merit. But like I said, we are before the court and we in the PDP are before the court and the PDP are confident and Nigerians are watching the judiciary very carefully to see that justice is done. So what are the strongest points that uh, you say your case is watertight? What are the, the strongest arguments that you have going forward into this uh, one, case? One of the arguments is this. 
the constitution is very clear. Other legal luminaries have come out to say that, look, for you to be declared a president-elect, you must have scored, apart from having the highest votes cut, you must have met the criteria of having 25% of the vote cast in the federal capital territory, the FCT Abuja. Mr. Ahmed Bola Tinobu did not meet that criteria. And even when there were voices that the coalition of that presidential result should be stepped down, Mohammed Yakubu still went ahead to say, look, nothing was to be done but this was the same man that came up before the whole world holding different press conferences to tell nigerians and the whole world that look elections are going to be uh, 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 uploaded through the beavers right from the polling unit he built confidence in nigerians and a lot of nigerians went out to elect their leaders but the result we have all seen is not a reflection of what Nigerians went out there to vote. Because it is so surprising that the people that won an election are out protesting. I don't know why they are out protesting. They have gone to uh, occupy the, 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 the Unity Fountain in Abuja, protesting. You, you, you win and you have won. You should be rejoicing, not protesting to... I don't understand. But that is one of the criteria. Bonamed Tinubu did not meet half 25 percent in uh, 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 the FCT and election results were mutilated across over 179,000 polling units and those are the issues the PDP through its presidential candidate Alaji Atiko Abubakar are presenting before the PPT uh, that this issue should be looked into. So the APC uh, should wait, should make their uh, 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 submission before the court, and they should they should stop this issue of uh, doing media trial. I know it's a stock in trade, trying people before the media, but we are waiting for the court. Uh, in a few days from now, uh, the courts are going to to sit. The presidential election petition tribunal are going to begin sitting, and all of the cases will be looked based on merit. Okay, well, everything is subject to interpretation by the courts of law. By right? how much uh, the power of argument, some in some cases, and all that. We are here and watching and to see. Or what the interpretation will be, then we will understand whether A is A and not B, uh, as the case may be. But let, let us let us go back to the 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 PDP itself. It seems there is some kind of deja vu. What we saw before the election is still playing out in some in some ways, because uh, no matter how it is, whether the presidential election was lost, there is still hope. Uh, in the number of people that can become governors under the umbrella of the PDP. And uh, houses of uh, assembly or uh, national houses, anyone that is still uh, to be contested for, every party is hoping to still win something. Now, a candidate or a, an aspirant has come out from uh, Kogi State in the person of Dino Melaye. He's not a candidate yet. He's, he's an aspirant. Yet somebody from far away, uh, Port Harcourt, River State, is saying that he has insight into the workings of Kogi PDP and that it's child's play if they are going to give to Dino Melaye, who eventually was a spokesman of the PDP, a high-ranking member of the PDP and a governor of the PDP, still fighting, just like the G5 fought with Atiku Abubakar, and a lot of people have said it resulted in the kind of results that we had, and that's why Atiku Abubakar lost. It has started again. What is PDP doing about this fight within the party 
that seems to sh portray the party as the parties whose center, borrowing the words of Chino Achebe, uh, cannot hold anymore and things have fallen apart? It is quite unfortunate the wranglings going on within the People's Democratic Party. And those wranglings have been around one man, uh, Governor Nyesom Wike. And from his last outing around the Kogi election that is to hold by the 11th of November, clearly shows that he's an interloper. And uh, I've read, I watched his interview. I also read and watched the reply of uh, Senator Dilo Malai to, to him. And we, the younger people in the party, are uh, 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 ashamed when elders like Wiki that are supposed to guide the younger ones directly and doing everything to pull down the party. And for Wike, it is this same party that made you who, whatever and whoever you are. So why pull the rug under the feet of the same party that made you? It is quite unfortunate. But I would like to say that, look, Kogi, politics is different from that of uh, River State. And Kogi people are going to decide the delegates by Sunday are going to decide who their governorship candidate for the PDP will be. And that will not be decided in River State. So Governor Nisan Bike should stay clear of Kogi politics. It should allow the people uh, uh, do their local politics by themselves. Him saying that uh, Senator Dino Malaye is not qualified to to to, to, to be uh, 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 the pre the governorship candidate for that for the party in uh, for in Kogi State is it's most unfortunate uh, a comment to have come from him because Senator Dino Malaye is highly qualified. Is fully, it has all the credentials necessary for him to context for the president, well, sorry, for the governorship, even for the president of this country. He has all the credentials. This was a one-time senator, a two-time senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. This was a one-time House of Rest member. This was a one-time uh, special assistant to the president of this country on youth affairs during the, uh, the tenure of... Uh, uh, General Rusha Gunabasanjo. So what stops Dino Malai? What makes him not to be qualified to be the president uh, or the governor of, uh, to contest uh, the governorship of Kogi? Dino has all the credentials. And just like he will say, if, if he, Wike, can become governor, right? Dino also can become governor because putting them side by side, They've all paid their dues in politics. They've all held one position uh, or the other in their political career. And in one way or the other, they've been able to distinguish themselves. So Governor Nisan Wike should stop this politics of, uh, of acrimony when someone is not on his side. And Dino you know, will come out to say, look, it was because I didn't side you to become a president and I didn't give words for you to be picked as a vice presidential candidate. That is why you are making this noise. You called me 19 times. You know, Dino kept those records. And I'm praying that maybe soon he should give us a voucher of those 19 times uh, of no we called him. So politics should be devoid of, of bitterness of personal uh, ego and uh, muscle flexing. So we can should stay clear of uh, Kogi politics. You allow Kogais to choose their leaders by themselves. Okay. Because nobody, uh, Dino was not, you know, uh, an interloper in his own state. So he shouldn't interlope. And Dino will say, look, this was the same man that supported me in 2019. What has changed? The only thing that changed 
is because I didn't support you to be the president of this country. I supported Alaji Atiku Abubakar. That is my only problem with you now. So I'm advising Governor Wiki that we, the younger people, are not uh, thoroughly ashamed about some of his uh, latest outing about the party. He shouldn't destroy the PDP for us. He has used that same vehicle to attain everything he has attained in this life. So why will he want to destroy that vehicle when some other younger people are on board? He shouldn't destroy the PDP. There is, there is a recurrent uh, question that everybody asks. Nyesom Wike is one man. And PDP, at one point in the history of this country, was adjudged to be the largest political party in black it Africa. Remains, it remains the largest political party. In black party. Africa. Yeah, okay. Granted. Why? People still keep asking, what does Wike have on the PDP that he cannot even be disciplined? Because I remember that recently, even... Uh, someone as high-ranking as Anyim, Pius Anyim, and so many other people were sanctioned. The Benway State governor was supposed to face a disciplinary committee, and Dino, who led the G5, was not touched. We didn't hear anything about it. What kind of role does he have on PDP that he remains untouched? And that is the question we should be asking the NWC of our party. Because this man has engaged in several anti-party activities, has made several inflammatory comments against the party, and that he's not disciplined up to now, it, it's surprising to me. And I don't think he has anything uh, uh, against the PDP, as it were, but it is, I, don't, I feel it is the, uh, the leadership of the NWC that is not uh, pragmatic or proactive in disciplining uh, Governor Wiki. Hmm. Because uh, he's not the only man in that party. Even if he has contributed uh, uh, the whole of Rivers' money to the PDP, he shouldn't be treating the party the way he's treating the party as are today. He shouldn't be demarketing the PDP the way he's demarketing the PDP, the way he goes about it, in the most brazen manner. Hmm. He goes about demarketing the PDP in the most brazen manner, and it's surprising that up to today, the NWC has not called him for discipline or for questioning. But you understand that he also ran to court uh, to say that uh, to restrain the PDP or any of our agents from uh, disciplining him. You tell you that he knows exactly what he's doing and he's looking for lacunas within the law to, to hide under. But like I said before, Wiki should not destroy the PDP for younger for, for the younger generation. But having this because kind of... Because if the same people have used to attain anything in, in his life, he shouldn't destroy the PDP for the younger people. I don't know. With, with, with such power that he seems to have, we go back to the Kogi election. And you're saying that tomorrow, on Sunday, the uh, Congress will be held or what, the primary election will be held for, uh, to choose who is going to represent the PDP. Don't you fear yes. that since it's still within the time that uh, he is in office and controlling whatever he has been controlling to help the PDP grow in other places, he could be a very, very great influence <laughs> in the Kogi election. Help the PDP grow in other places? Well, what would he I say? He didn't support us in Oshun State. And Governor Adeleke won. Hmm? So we have indices and data of where he, he put his hand in the PDP and PDP also lost in Cross River. He supported a PDP candidate and he lost to the APC woefully. He didn't support Adeleke in uh, 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 Oshun State and Adeleke won. None of the G5 governors was present during the campaigns. Even Shein Makile of your State, that is a neighbor to Oshun, did not attend the campaigns. What are they like a one? So what are we talking about? Hmm. It is your ability to convince the electorate. 
if you are able to convince the voters, if you are able to go to their doorstep, give them a convincing blueprint of what you want to do for them, they will vote for you. So we can, cannot sit in a, a, a river state and detect anything that happens in any other state. Or even seem to rejoice when any other thing happens in any other state. Hmm. So that is uh, that is very far from me. The, the the contestants are, are of the PDP are already talking to the delegates, already lobbying them, are already uh, presenting the blueprint for the transformation of Kogi State uh, to them. I will believe that by the special grace of God, by Sunday a credible candidate will emerge with the PDP that will wrestle power from the failed APC government in uh, 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 in Kogi State and give Kogi State dividends of democracy. Uh, that, that is what the PDP is, uh, PDP is known for. The PDP gives the people dividends of democracy. They bring governance closer to the people. And that is what uh, I believe there are very highly qualified uh, candidates uh of the pdp there that are going to deliver and senator dino malaye is one of them and he he he, he towers high uh above several many of the candidates that are presenting themselves uh to to to, to serve the good people of Kogi state so i uh, i believe that the the, the family is intact in Kogi, and kogais we do the right thing we, the PDP family there will elect a candidate okay. uh, and give them a candidate. And when the polls by November, I'm hopeful that the PDP is going to okay. have a landslide uh, victory. Just, just, just a quick one. Um, from 1999 till 2014, uh, PDP towered above every other party. And it, was, it, it had this pride that the internal mechanism that solves problems was so tight, and that is why everybody was staying in line. Now, after 2014, from 2015 till now, like a lot of people have said, PDP has not done well as an opposition party. What happened to the PDP's mechanism of solving problems? Because whether we run away from it or not, we know that that problem of the G5 and so many other things that happened uh, give PDP a very you bad see, name. We, so what we'll happened to the PDP? We we'll discussed some of those issues. The parties... Can you still hear me? I can't hear you. We've discussed some of those issues okay. before. And... The party to have particularly financial autonomy Mm. is because most of those governors contribute hugely financially to the political parties. And they feel that they have the political parties at the back of their pockets. And that is one of the reasons why uh, I believe someone like Nisan Wiki will not be quickly disciplined mm. by, by the party leadership. Because you will hear stories that he bought Prado Jeep for this person, he bought this one for that person, he bought this one for that person. And, you know, it's very clear in the Bible also that at times you refuse gifts so that your judgment will not be beclouded. You know? So, we, the parties need to be financially independent. Party members need to learn how to pay dues to the party right from the world level. You know, uh, so that is what I believe is one of the problems. The party need financial independence. Okay. The parties not, don't need to be the are the apron strings of uh, state governors moving forward. Um, supplementary elections are coming. What are the chances of PDP? We are fully prepared. Uh, candidates have gone back to the field within this three weeks uh, break we had to talk and convince the electorate to vote for them. And uh, I believe that 
in Kebi, in Sokoto, in uh, Adamawa, we are, we are hopeful to, to clinch some of the many seats available, that of the governorship in uh, Adamawa particularly. Okay. Um... Some of the, the senatorial vote in Sokoto and Kebi. We are hopeful that All right. we are going to come out victorious. And I want to use this opportunity to advise the, the military and INEC to do the right thing. The military should not mm. be joining uh, militarizing elections. INEC should do the right thing. Okay. Uh, INEC should not be seen to be a, a biased empire. INEC should be seen to be unbiased in discharge of their duties. Okay, thank you very much. We can only wish you good luck in whatever election comes in, comes up next, whether supplementary or a one-off thing or off-season election. We can just wish you good luck. Thank you so much, Angle, thank for being part of this Thank program. you very much. Good evening. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We've been talking with uh, Mr. Angu Ongu, not Central Zonal Coordinator at Tiku Support Organization and also a member of the PDP. We're talking about the internal wranglings within the PDP and so many other things around the party. We'll take a short break now and when we return, we shall be discussing the APC's request to dismiss the Labour Party's election petition and also the supplementary elections holding soon. In fact, in a matter of hours. Stay with us.